H-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston and Phil Harris and his orchestra. The orchestra opens a program with In Old Chicago. <laughs> This is the shortest month of the year, but even so, there are plenty of days to enjoy Jell-O. And plenty of ways to enjoy Jell-O, too. For no matter how you serve it, plain or combined with fruits or topped with whipped cream, Jell-O is always delicious. That's because it's crammed with delicious, extra-rich fruit flavor. A luscious, satisfying, real fruit taste that makes Jell-O America's favorite dessert. No other gelatin dessert brings you Jell-O's extra-rich fruit flavor. No other can top it for sheer delightful goodness. All six flavors are equally tempting. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. But just be sure to insist on genuine Jell-O when you buy. Don't accept any substitutes. Look for the big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. That was an old Chicago from the picture of the same name played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you... Hold it, ma- Don. Jack isn't here yet. Well, not here yet. Well, are you sure, Phil? I didn't see him. Did you, Mary? No. Have you looked under everything? Yeah. Well, that's strange. I wonder where Jack can be. He was here last Sunday, if that'll help. <laughs> uh, maybe he met somebody on the way over and they stopped off to eat. Now, it wouldn't take him that long, would it? It would if the other guy didn't pick up the check. <laughs> I think you better call up his house. Yeah. Number, please. Uh, operator, get me Hollywood uh, 3981 and uh, hurry up, hurry. Oh, keep your shirt on. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Benny's residence. Uh, hey, Rochester, is Mr. Benny there? Yes, sir, but he's still in bed. In bed? Well, now, you go and wake him up and tell him the program started. Is he on it today? Why, of course he is. Uh, you better get right down here. Okay, but I hate to wake him up just for that. <laughs> Doggone, why don't they let that man rest? Mmm, he sure looks happy there. He must be dreaming about a blonde. It's a brunette. Hey, Mr. Benny. Mr. Benny. You're low again. Oh, good morning, Rochester. Good morning. Morning? Man, morning came and went and almost is again. <laughs> My goodness, is it as late as that? Yes, sir. Mr. Wilson just called up and said... Wilson? Hey, I've got a program to do. Rochester, this is a fine thing. I thought told you to call me at 12 o'clock. I was out playing polo then. <laughs> well, put down your mallet and help me get dressed. i got to rush over at the studio. Get me my underwear. Here you are. Ain't you going to take a bath? I haven't time for a bath. Anyway, I can miss one day. Okay, but I better dust you off. <laughs> Never mind that. Give me my socks. You know, the gray ones without the holes. And give me a shirt, too. You want a clean one, or are you going to wear a muffler? (laughs) Well, of course I want a clean one. Gosh, how could I oversleep eight hours? If you ever let me do that again, Rochester, you won't get that raise I promised you. There goes nothing. (laughs) Is that so? Look, and I'll answer the door. Get me my shoes. They're under the bed. All right, I'm coming. Yes, sir, what is it? Pardon me, I have a package here for Mr. Homer Truffle. Homer Truffle? I'm sorry, but you got the wrong place. Sign right here, Mr. Truffle. Look, look, I'm in a hurry. I'm not Homer Truffle. I don't even know Homer Truffle. Well, you should. He's an awfully nice fellow. Goodbye. (laughs) Everything happens when I'm in a rush. Hey, Rochester, where's my necktie? Ain't you going to shave? Your whiskers are kind of long. I haven't got time for that. I'll just put a little powder on. That ain't gonna fool nobody. 
Now, mind your own business. Give me my hat and coat. I'll answer the phone. Hello? Hello, Jack. What's keeping you? Oh, it's you, Mary. I'll be over in a few minutes. Keep the program going. All right. But, oh, Jack, I must tell you, the funniest thing happened a few minutes ago. <laughs> well, what is it, Mary? Well, Phil Harris was showing Don Wilson how to play a new card game. Yes. And now Don is the orchestra leader. <laughs> oh. Are you all playing the game? I'll say. Kenny just won my new hat. You know, the one with the red feathers on it. He did? Is he wearing it? Yeah, he thinks he's an Indian. <laughs> Me, he big sheep. <laughs> Fine Indian. I'll scalp him when I get to the studio. I wish you would. I want my hat back. Well, hang up, Mary. I got to finish dressing. I'll be right over. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. I knew something would happen if I wasn't there. Hey, Rochester! Rochester! Right here, boss. Here's your hat and coat. Okay. Where's my wristwatch? Your what? My wristwatch. Where is it? Oh, you don't want that. <laughs> I do, too. Rochester, where is my wristwatch? You mean that no good little thing that never keeps time? Rochester, where is my wristwatch? You could have lost it, you know. Rochester, where is my wristwatch? Okay, here's the ticket. <laughs> I thought so. Why, Rochester? You're the third the greenest man I ever worked for. Never mind that. You pawned my watch. How much did you get on it? Eight dollars? Eight dollars? Yeah, I could never get over five. Next time? Next time I'll go with you. Yeah, next time wait for the laugh, too. Uh, <laughs> well... <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take this up with you later. So long. Goodbye, boys. It's a fine butler I've got after all I've done. Oh, taxi, taxi, NBC studio, quick. Hey, Mr. Benny. Mr. Benny! I'm in a hurry, Rochester. What is it? Ain't you gonna wear no pants? <laughs> pants? Well, of all the... Wait a minute, driver. I'll be right out. Gee, I hope the neighbors weren't looking. Oh. That was, uh, that was Let That Be a Lesson to You from Hollywood Hotel, played by Don Wilson and his jolly Jell-O Jorkestra. <laughs> and, Don, I couldn't have done worse myself. Well, I don't know about that, Phil. At least the boys in the orchestra followed me, didn't they, Mary? Yeah, I wish you'd have gone home. <laughs> Say, that's a pip. <laughs> Look, I'm an Indian. <laughs> Quiet, song and the puss. <laughs> Hello, fellas. Well, Gee, I'm sorry I'm late. You know, you know, this is the first time I've ever overslept that much. Imagine, 18 hours. The Sandman must have slugged you. <laughs> and say, Mary, the most awful thing happened to me. I was in such a hurry, I rushed out of the house without my pants. And I had to go back, I didn't put them on. I tell you, I was never so embarrassed in my life. Imagine going out without my pants. Well, just turn them around now and you'll be all set. <laughs> oh, oh! 
<laughs> well, I can do that later, I Say, think. Jack. What? You know, the same thing happened to me once. What's that, Kenny? I got up at 6 o'clock one morning to go to work and put my pants on backwards. Uh-huh. And then I walked by the mirror and thought I was just coming in, so I went back to bed again. <laughs> I bet you must have felt silly, huh? And then when I went to bed, I put my pajamas on backwards and thought I was just getting out. Oh, quiet. <laughs> go over in the corner and play Indian. Okay, white boy. <laughs> Say, Phil. Yes, Jack. Uh, what's this I hear about Don winning your orchestra from you? That's his tough luck. <laughs> I know, but gee, what are you going to do now? Don't worry about me. Ladies and gentlemen, if you happen to breeze by a grocery store, why don't you walk in and say to the clerk, listen, Shorty, slip me a couple of boxes of Jell-O, will you? Jell-O, eh? What flavor, sir? All six of them, Baldy. <laughs> Okay, Kinky. Uh, say, Kink, uh, you kind of go for Jello, don't you? Yeah, man. <laughs> Why, Phil, that was marvelous. Did you hear that, Don? Not bad, huh? Oh, he used a stooge. Yes, but I wasn't any good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cheer up, Don. After all, you did leave the orchestra. Say, how were you anyway? Well, Jack, uh, we started off pizzicato, mm -hmm. uh, ripped through the allegretto, and yes. when we got to the crescendo, believe me, Jack, it was fortissimo. It was? What does he mean, Phil? Don't ask me. I'm a civilian now. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, a change like this is good once in a while. Believe me. Come in. Special delivery for Mary Livingston. Oh, it's from my mother. How do you know? You haven't even seen it. Probably isn't from your mother at all. It is, too. <laughs> oh. Well, Mary, open it up. Let's hear what the Plainfield Mrs. Fiddler has to say. Just a minute. Sign here, please. Oh, yes. Here, bud, here's a tip for you. You got change for a quarter? No, I left my wallet on my yacht. <laughs> hmm. I never heard such impudence. Oh, why didn't you give him the whole quarter? It wouldn't break you. Mary, you know that's an eagle on a quarter, not a homing pigeon. <laughs> Well, why don't you open the letter? Okay. Well, that's a novelty, a wooden envelope. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Look at the way Mama starts your letter. Plainfield, New Jersey. <laughs> February 1st. That's yeah, starting out good already, huh? The old... Well, go ahead, now. <laughs> My dear daughter, Mary. Received your letter and thanks very much for sending us a check for our anniversary. You shouldn't have done it. Well, that was sweet, Mary. Huh? I gave your father the check to send back to you, and he has a brand new suit to prove it. Oh. oh. We celebrated our anniversary by going to a movie. We saw Thoroughbred Don't Cry with a swell kid acting it named Macaroni. Macaroni? That's Mickey Rooney. <laughs> Macaroni. Huh? Uh, your Uncle Otto, who dropped in for Thanksgiving and stayed four months, has promised to leave next Thursday. He better, as your father, put a time bomb under his bed. Well, that's one way of getting him out. Huh? I think your father means it, as he has already ordered a new roof. Well, well... I must tell you what happened yesterday. Your brother Hillard swallowed his harmonica, and now we can't get him to play anything unless we put a nickel in his nose. <laughs> Commercial little fellow, isn't he? Huh? Go ahead, Mary. Uh, you remember how much trouble your sister Babe had with her eyes? Well, the doctor said she doesn't have to wear glasses anymore. That's good. We think she does. She came in the house last night and said, Hello, Papa, to the gas stove. <laughs> oh, well, that's awful, isn't uh, it? We didn't want to make her feel bad, though, so this morning we cooked breakfast on your father. Well, that's just trying to be funny. <laughs> no other news. Mm hmm Oh, we'll close now. Give my love to the whole gang and say hello to Jack. Your affectionate mother, Bubbles Livingston. <laughs> Bubbles? Well. P.S. Oh, gee, more stuff, huh? Please ask Kenny Baker to sing by Mere Bits of Shane, as he is the only one who hasn't done it yet. Hey, she's right at that. Hey, Kenny, do you know by Mere Bits of Shane? Oh, I think I do. How does it go? You know, by Mere Bits of Shane, so let me explain. Dum, 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 da dum, 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 dum. You get it, Kenny? What's left of it? <laughs> well, sing it. Play Phil or Don or whoever owns the orchestra. I'm 
bei mir bist du schön, means that you're grand. Again, I'll explain, it means you're the fairest in the land. I could say Bella, Bella, even say Wunderbar, each language only helps to say how grand. girls I've known and I've known some until I first met you I was lonesome and when you came inside dear my heart grew light and this whole world seemed so divine Bella, even say, wunderbar, each language only helps me say how grand you are. I try to explain by me. By Mere Beast Duchesne, sung by Kenny Baker. And Kenny, for a song that's been kicked around as much as that, it certainly sounded great. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> that kid gets sillier every day. Huh? Oh, say, Jack. Yes, Don? You know, I've been uh, wanting to ask you something all evening, and I've just remembered what it is. Uh, what is it, Don? Said he, slipping gracefully into a new routine. <laughs> What, Don? <laughs> well, now, Jack, you were out at Santa Anita Racetrack last Friday, weren't you? Yeah, what about it? Well, I was just wondering if you had a bet on Playmay. You know, the horse that paid $673 for a $2 ticket. Boy, what a horse. That's not a horse. That's an annuity. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't have a bet on her, Don, and I'm sorry you brought it up. I've been sick about it ever since. You know, I had a hunch to play that horse. I, I had it on my mind for days. I'm surprised you didn't, Jack. You're always looking for a bargain. Well, I tell you, Phil, I'm disgusted with myself. You were there, Mary. Remember that horse that paid 673 to 2? I'll say I had it right on the nose. That's right, you did, yeah. Gee, that was a marvelous price for a horse to pay. Who was the jockey? Santa Claus. <laughs> I can't understand why I backed out on it. Huh? Well, uh, what made you change your mind, Jack? Do you really want to know what happened, Don? Yes. Well, this is positively pathetic. What was it, Jack? Tell us. I'll do better than that. I'll show you. The scene is the Santa Anita racetrack, 10 minutes before the first race last Friday. Take it away, Santa Anita. <laughs> Gee, it's sure crowded here today, isn't it, Marion? Yeah. Are you going to bet on anything in the first race, Jack? Look, Mary, I've got a hunch on a long shot, a horse called Playmate. Why, well, that horse ought to pay 100 to 1. Don't tell me you're going to bet a whole dollar. A dollar? I'm going to bet two. That's what I think of her. Must be love. <laughs> now, listen to this hunch. The horse's name is Playmay, isn't it? Yes. Well, for years, I've been saying Play Phil, haven't I? You get it? Play Phil. Yeah, but the horse's name is Play May. All right, Smarty, I'm not through. What month was I born in? February. Well, can't you see? It's only two months from February to May. <laughs> <laughs> Play May. I tell you, I can't lose. Oh, Mary. I don't know. And not only that, but look how, look how it works out. The horse's name is Play May. Now, spell May backwards. Uh, Y-A-M. Yam. <laughs> <laughs> 
There you are, yam. And you know I'm crazy about sweet potatoes. <laughs> I tell you, Mary, it's in the bag. Well, I don't care. I'm going to bet on the favorite, Negret. I got a hunch, too. Negret? What's your hunch? Well, I've got two knees, and I feel gret today. <laughs> That's silly. Well, anyway, I'm going over to the window and bet on Play Me. That's the horse, believe me. Now, you wait here, will okay. you, Mary? Okay. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Kenny. Say, who have you got in the first race? Well, Jack, I don't know much about picking horses. Gosh, I, I don't know whether to bet on City Slicker or Brenda. What do you think? Well, I wouldn't know what to tell you, Kenny. Of course, one horse is a gelding and the other is a filly, you know. What do you mean, Jack? Well, one is a male and the other is a female. Oh, are there two kinds? <laughs> Look, Kenny, I can save you a lot of trouble. Just bet on a horse called Play Me. It's going to come in and pay you a fortune. She will? Sure. Take my advice, Kenny. Put $2 on his nose. All right. Lend me $2, will you? Kenny, I'm not a finance company. <laughs> See you later. Hey, Jack, Jack. What is it, Mary? I was just talking to Bing Crosby, and he said you shouldn't make any bets till the fourth race. Why? Then you can lose your money on his horse. <laughs> well, I'm not going to put any more money on Crosby's horses. I bet on one last week. And he stopped right in the home stretch and sang, I Surrender Dear. <laughs> I didn't mind that so much, but the jockey was playing a bazooka. <laughs> now listen, Mary, I'm going over to this window and bet on my original hunch, Play Me. Okay, see you later. Yes, sir. Plenty of money and you can found. Oh, <laughs> oh God, this horse can't lose. Hey, buddy, come here a minute, will you? What is it? Now, listen, pal, I'm going to give you a tip that's so hot you can fry an egg on it. I'm sorry, mister, I've had breakfast. <laughs> Besides, I'm putting my money on Play Me. Play Me? Why, that nag couldn't win if you put a diesel engine there. <laughs> oh, yeah? Take my tip, buddy. Play the favorite, Negret. The favorite? <laughs> Negret, huh? Do you, think, do you think he'll come in first? Why, he'll be dancing at the Trocadero before the rest of them hit the home stretch. Gee, say, maybe that is the horse for me. Are you sure? Are you sure Negret will win? Cross my heart and honest engine. Well, that's good enough for me. I'm going right over and bet on Negret. Gee, I'm glad I met you. Wait a minute, buddy. Got a cigar? Only the one I'm smoking. Well, that'll do. So long. <laughs> Didn't have to jerk it out of my face there. Here's the window. Hey, mister, give me a $2 ticket on the... Hey, get in line, you. Sure, that's what I say, too. Oh, I'm sorry, lady. Gee, everybody... Pushing and shoving and... Uh, hey, mister. What is it? Will you please hold still? I've been trying to pick your pocket for ten minutes. <laughs> now, get away from here. I'm ticklish. <laughs> well, come on, come on. What'll it be? Uh, I want a uh, $2 ticket on Negret. Win, place, or show? Uh, to win. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, make it to place. That's it. To... No, 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 look. Better make that show. That's it, to show. Yes, that's better. Okay, reckless. <laughs> Here's my $2. Thanks. Well, let go of it. <laughs> oh. Well, don't rush me. I may never see it again. Hey, Mary, Mary. Yeah? I just bought a ticket. I changed my horse to the one you had, Negret. That's funny. I changed mine to Playmate. You did? Well, why didn't you tell me? Gosh, I don't know. I don't know who's going to win. Well, the race starts in a couple of minutes. Let's go over and grab a hot dog. I'm starved. Okay, but I won't enjoy it. <laughs> hey, buddy, come here a minute. What do you want? I got a hot tip for you in the first race. A horse called Barcarole. Barcarole? You just told me Negret was going to win. Oh, are you the guy? Pardon me. <laughs> I'm sorry I came out here at all. Oh, come on, Jack. Let's grab a hot dog. Hey, it's too late now, Mary. The horses are lining up. Well, I'm hungry. Here's a stand right here. All right, hurry up, mister. Give us two hot dogs and plenty of mustard. Okay, here you are. Here's a quarter. Keep the change. Come on, Mary. Let's get up close to the rail, huh? Wait for me. Gee, I'm nervous. I wonder if I did right in switching from Playmate to Negret. You'll hmm? find out. Gosh, I'm excited. Mary, give me the binoculars. Here you are. Thanks. Mary, that's the hot dog. Now my face is full of mustard. <laughs> Darn it. Hmm? Go on. That's the healthiest you've looked all year. <laughs> is that so? Give me your field glasses. Look, Mary, Negret is number seven. Gee, that's a swell position. When they break, he'll be on the outside. <laughs> There they go! Gee, there they go, Mary! Come on, Playmate! Hey, Blake, Sunchrist takes the lead. Miranda second by two lengths. City Slicker third by a length and a half. Come on, Negret! Come on, Playmate! They're coming into the half. Sunchrist is leading by two lengths. Miranda second and Barcarole third, but moving up fast. And here comes Rosalie from the picture of the 
same name. <laughs> Rosalie? <laughs> Come on, play me, play me, play me. Hey, where's Negret? At the three quarters, it's Miranda in the lead. Negret second. Come on, Negret! Marcarol third, July 4th, and Louis the 16th. <laughs> Louis the 16th, that's a mistake. Well, I'm only human. <laughs> it's a fine race. Look, they're coming into the stretch. You said it, sister. Verinda first by a length, Playmate second, and coming up fast. Playmate! Oh, my two dollars. Why didn't I bet on her? Playmate, come on! Gee, I'm afraid of love. And here's the winner. It's Playmate first by a nose. See, Don, that's exactly what happened to me last Friday at Santa Anita. Oh, that's too bad, Jack. You should have followed your hunch. Why, certainly. Come in. Say, buddy, I got a hot tip for you in the second race. You can't lose. Oh, oh it's terrific. Away. Will you play? For a swell new dessert that's delicious and tempting, here's the answer. It's called Apricot Bavarian Cream, and it's one of the grandest desserts you've ever enjoyed, made with luscious strawberry jello, whipped cream, and apricots. And here's what you do dissolve one package of strawberry jello and chill until slightly thickened. Then fold in three fourths of a cup of whipped cream, a cup and a half of cooked apricots, mashed, and a half a cup of sugar. Mold until firm, and you have the swellest dessert you've seen in a long time. It's a rich, creamy rose color, and it's a perfect flavor combination for apricots and strawberry jello taste simply grand together. Just be sure to make your apricot Bavarian cream with genuine jello. For there's only one jello, and only jello brings you that delicious, extra rich fruit flavor. Ask your grocer for jello. <laughs> number of the 19th program in the new Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. And the moral of our little playlet is, never bet on a sure thing, unless you're sure it's a sure thing. What's that, Mary? Your horse just came in. I knew he'd come through. Good night, folks. Baker appears on the Jell-O program through courtesy of Mervyn Leroy Productions. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>